today's video is going to be about how we are running cameras on territorial rut scrapes and how we're using that data year over year over year to actually go in and, and hunt these areas. So first thing we have to do here is provide some context around the areas um, that we're hunting, specifically for this example. So this is a big woods track. We were talking 80, 90, 100,000 acres of, for the most part, unbroken timber. There's not a whole lot of structure. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, when you're looking at these big woods, that term big woods, a lot of guys say 5,000 acres. Some guys say 2,000 acres. The term big woods for us, regardless of the size of the parcel, um, really just means there's not a whole lot of structure around. So you're looking at um, topography, terrain features that are really adding some kind of structure. Maybe it's some TSI that's adding some structure in that area. So for this specific example, take a look at our map. And this is actually the very first spot that we ever went in and, and, and scouted in this area. And it turned out to be a dynamite spot. Now, I think that we got kind of lucky, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a couple things on the topo map that really caught our eye and led us to this area. So... As you see through this entire area, the, ter the terrain here is pretty steep. So naturally, you're going to look at saddles and benches to kind of pinpoint or funnel deer movement. So as you look on this point here, you can see that there's a bench system kind of that follows this 900 or just above this 900 uh, foot index line. And as that wraps around this drainage, it ties into what is not really a saddle, um, it's more of a kind of a lazy L. This this spur, this point is really, really steep, as you could tell, and then it just simply flattens off. But what is intriguing in this spot is this bench at this 900-foot index line ties right into here. And then on the, on the leeward side of this ridge, there's also a bench that comes right through here and then ties into this other ridge system. So there's a couple saddles over here, but as you follow that, that index line, down through there, you can see that there's a bench that goes probably a mile across there. So that's really what caught our eye to go in and physically run a camera and actually see what's uh, see what was happening in this area. And what we found out was it's basically a cruising spot during the rut. We've had a camera there for several years, since 2016, maybe even 15. And the camera's basically dead the entire season until about the 27th 28th of october when deer are starting to or bucks specifically are starting to range out a little bit and lay down sign in that in that um in that sign phase so in this bench and the reason why we actually hung a camera here on this bench where it ties into this again not really a saddle but just this flat spot in this ridge there's two scrapes so um, those were planned as data C in our postseason scouting. We hung cameras there and then initially saw zero activity all through the summer, all through the early part of the season. But then again, during the sign phase in late October, during scrape week, bucks starting to range out and freshen that scrape up and actually physically start to use that scrape. And the interesting thing is that scrape or those two scrapes stayed active all the way through December. So it's the entire month of November into December when these bucks are actually cruising. Um, now, we're going to show you some pictures of some bucks from 2019 and bucks that have already been into that location in 2020. Um, some of that, some of these photos are going to be at night, but that's not really concerning to us. It's still a spot that we would go in and hunt because I think some of the nighttime movement is basically going to be geared towards weather and some of the daylight stuff is also going to be geared towards weather. So this isn't necessarily a spot that we're gonna go in and hunt on maybe a specific day for a specific deer. Um, it just doesn't play out like that, but this is more of a, of a spot that you would go in and sit during a certain time period or window, and you would sit there every day. Uh, and if you were able to do that mentally, stay disciplined enough to go in and hunt this rut spot for let's say five to seven days, um, you would surely have a chance at a 130 plus caliber deer a couple really really big deer on camera here so let's take a look at some of the trail camera pictures and break them down so as we mentioned this spot really doesn't heat up until the later part of october as you can see here this small little eight pointer came in october 28th and the biggest thing that we gained from this information 
or this specific um, photo is us realizing we have no way of telling where this deer came from from this photo, which led us to add another camera further down the ridge um, on, a, on another scrape. So this is an area where, again, this is more of a rut territorial type scrape where cruising deer are going to come in and, and check those scrapes and check that sign. It's not necessarily a primary scrape, that's why we're saying that this, uh, this is a spot that you really need to hunt three, four, five, six days and catch these bucks on long movement versus going in and targeting a specific deer. But as we click through some of these pictures from 2019, um, again, we caught a deer coming down the ridge. We have no way of telling if he came from the steep or if he came up from one of the benches. And um, so again... The same type of information is gathered from this specific picture. So we added a camera further up the ridge. So now, jumping back to our map, what we have here from those two pictures, we started with a camera right here, right where that ridge starts to flatten out, and we added a camera here on this ridge, and then we added one just, uh, just up towards the top. So now we have three cameras on that ridge and able to decipher better decipher that line of movement whether that's coming straight down this ridge straight up this ridge or if bucks are just indeed using this bench and crossing at this low spot so let's go back to some of these photos so there's um first daylight activity in the spot october 28th and then the second daylight activity november 1st so again this is that same small eight pointer coming in working that scrape november 1st so for us to go in and hunt this spot, it's a it's an area where we're probably going to start throwing some sits at it November 1st. November 2nd, we have a bigger deer show up. Again, this is 6.30 in the morning. These bucks are just cruising through here. Some of this nighttime, um, some of the nighttime trail camera information that we're getting, uh, we are going to tie that to weather. So if it's a good weather day, then it's worth an all-day sit. If it's, you know, 65 degrees on November 3rd, um, this is probably not the best location to go sit all day. Is, is it worth a morning sit when the temps are cooler? Absolutely. Um, as those temperatures start to increase, more than likely those bucks are going to be laying on their bellies, not moving or ranging as far out uh, during the day. So keep that in mind as you guys are analyzing your trail camera pictures. So November 4th is really the first time a truly big deer shows up on camera. Uh, again, 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, again, that same deer comes back November 8th. 8.30 p.m., so we're getting a little closer to daylight. November 9th, we again have daylight activity. As you'll notice, so far with three daylight pitchers in this spot, every daylight pitcher has been in the morning. Um, and I think that's a pretty big deal, again, referring back to those cooler temps with bucks ranging out on these long movements in the mornings while the temperature's cooler, um, and then being less active through the day as those temperatures start to rise. November 11th. That big deer shows back up in the middle of the day cruising. You can see his tongue hanging out. He's more than likely locked on a doe. November 14th, the big deer is back again, 2 o'clock in the morning. Check that scrape and proceeds, you know, now we're into December with, with some different bucks showing up. Now, the interesting thing in this photo specifically, you'll notice a younger deer but a big framed eight-pointer coming through there the 12th of, uh, or the 7th of December. And we may have had this deer on camera a little earlier, but fast forward to 2020, and this deer is actually in that spot, September 28th, um, or which what we believe to be the same same deer. So there's a giant eight pointer in there, which I think this picture is probably an outlier, as typically we've never in four years of running uh, cameras in this spot, we've never had a deer on camera this early. So as you guys look at this specific photo, um, you'll notice big frame deer on November 4th or October 14th. It's a little earlier then um, we've seen some activity in this spot last year. But the, th the information that we're taking away is that we believe this to be the big frame deer last year that walked in daylight November 11th. This is a deer that we could potentially go in and target in that specific area. And knowing that that deer walked during daylight November 11th, more than likely a doe drug him by, but he was through that area several different times. Um, so confirming that that deer is alive with this picture, that is a deer that we expect to walk in daylight this year on that spot. 
with the pitchers from last year and confirmation that the deer is alive this year, um, knowing that he daylight walked November 11th last year, this would be a spot that we would feel confident going in, let's say, November 7th and hunting that until November 13th. So there are a couple different daylight walkers in there from 19, but specifically we would feel pretty good uh, about the odds of this specific big frame deer walking through this spot in daylight in that week. So if you find yourself watching this video feeling kind of pressured to behind the eight ball, kind of down in the dumps because you don't have any data from last year to review to set yourself up for the 2020 rut, that's okay. Right now, the end of October is the time to go out, find these locations, hang your cameras, and let them soak. Um, even if you don't have any intentions of going in and hunting these areas or checking your cards this year, let those cameras soak, get that annual data so you're ahead of the game uh, for the 2021 rut. So we hope this video provides a bunch of value for you. We hope that the 2020 rut is everything you wished and dreamed of. And we, again, thank you for the continued support on this YouTube channel. If you have any uh, questions or comments, any strategies that you guys like to uh, implement during your annual rut hunting, drop them in the comments below. Smash that subscribe button for us, and we'll see you next time. Scrape Week 2020.